Hello lovely people. Whenever you're browsing AliExpress or eBay for cheap amplifier boards, probably we've seen something similar to this. Now in this video, we're gonna talk about what this is and how clean it actually is. So the title of the video might be slightly misleading because this is not the cheapest, cheapest amplifier that you can buy, but this is probably one of the cheapest. I paid £5.70, including shipping and tax and everything, for it to come to my home, and this is pretty much it. This is the whole amplifier. There's another YouTuber in the UK called Adam Francis, and he just recently released a few videos about timu amplifiers and speakers so he bought loads of timu speakers and amplifiers and he made like a boom box it's a very cool video go ahead and watch that but in this video we're going to dive deep into actually what this thing is so if you've seen these they come in a few different variations some of them have four channels five channels some of them have a subwoofer channel but this is probably the simplest one which is just a stereo amplifier so what it has it has an auxiliary input it has a usb input and you can connect it via Bluetooth to this thing. It has the only thing it has is a volume knob and nothing else. Some of them have like tone adjustments and that kind of stuff. And here on the very end, you see two speaker outputs, left and right, and you have audio output for a headphone, three and a half millimeter headphone jack. So this is just an amplifier. It doesn't have a power supply. You need to have some sort of power supply for this thing. And this power supply, it, it takes everything from eight volts all the way up to 24 volts. So obviously, since it doesn't have any transformers inside or anything, the rail is gonna depend on the voltage that you're gonna feed it. So technically, the higher the voltage, the more power you can get out of it. So I was using for testing this cheap uh, power supply, adjustable that can be adjusted all the way from four volts all the way up to 25 volts. So this is perfectly for that. And I did the measurements on different voltages just to see if it's gonna perform better or worse on lower voltage or on higher voltage. So it does come, basically this is how it comes like this. You just have to assemble it and it has this jack, which you put it in and then after a few seconds, it starts flashing. So this flashing kind of indicates that it's working. And I do believe it goes straight into the Bluetooth pairing. So you can use an app, or I think there's a way how to connect it without the app. So I tested this using auxiliary inputs and outputs on these on the static loads. So just to show you what's inside, because it's a very, very simple board. And if you saw any of my previous videos, probably you've seen uh, DSPs, cheap Chinese DSPs such as Sinopo or Nakamichi or what else did I test it? Recoil DSPs and they do have these very similar chips. So basically this is pretty much it. This is the JL Bluetooth chip and this one which sticks with a sticker if I'm going to remove it. Uh, you won't be able to see but there's a just a little class D uh, chip that is cooled with this little tiny heating and just a few capacitors and that's pretty much it there's no elaborate adjustments or like dsp features nothing it's just literally a tiny tiny chip amplifier on a single board and yeah so it does claim to have two times 50 watts but obviously we know that those rates are inflated it's max wattage it cannot do 50 watts using 13, 15, or even 20 volts of power supply. But I'm gonna show you all of that. So the main question is, what are these can be used for and are they clean enough for daily music listening? So without any further ado, let's jump into the laptop and I'm gonna show you all the measurements of this little thing. So I just wanna show you, this is the amplifier that I actually bought. This is the same one, so 453, plus tax and shipping and everything else. So you can see two times 50, from it shows 12 24 but it's from 8 and headphones auxiliary and that kind of stuff so these amplifiers like these you can find loads of them different formats like different channels but i would imagine they're going to measure something similar because most of them are going to be using the same amplifier chips but yeah you can find loads of them so let's start with this one so this is stage d plus noise 
uh, depending on the output power and measured on different voltages so you can see like 24 9 and 14 so 9 and 14 volts we have kind of the same everything is a little bit lower than half a percent hd so if you remember from my like standards everything below 0 0.1 is kind of a good amplifier everything below 0 0.01 is an excellent amplifier and most like car audio amplifiers are going to fit somewhere in this range everything above 0 0.1 in my standards is kind of bad and this is like it's really bad it's half a percent distortion no matter what no matter the power and if you crank it up the voltage up to 24 you see it's one and a half percent up to two percent and yeah it's it's dirty it's very very dirty so let's have a look at the output power as i mentioned depending on the power supply voltage you're going to have different outputs so if we have nine volts like a nine volt battery if you run it you would have something like six watts per channel up to one percent clipping a little bit more seven watts if you would run it from like a car battery in the car like 14 volts or something you would have probably like 15 watts clean up to one percent we have 17 watts so this is exactly the same as we have with head units and with all those cheap dsp amplifiers like recoil nakamichi senopo and that kind of stuff they have these similar chips that do max out about 15 to 17 watts so it's exactly the same now surprising part if we run it at 24 volts we have less output for some reason because it does it really doesn't like to run at 24 volts so I, i'm going to show you the other measurements as well but if you crank it up above like 16 17 volts it doesn't really like it it does play but it doesn't like it so it is a tiny bit cleaner at higher voltages higher output but we get what 10 11 volt watts 10 11 watts at one percent THD so it's not nice but at the lower volumes you can see it's very very dirty at 24 volts of power supply so let's have a look at the other measurements so this is one kilohertz sine tone as we usually have running at nine volts and typical amplifiers we're gonna have floor somewhere here about minus 120 so it does have quite a lot of noise however these harmonics are really really bad they're horrible the second harmonic you can see minus 50 and that that's going to be clearly audible everything below 60 a uh, it might be audible but like at this it's yeah it's going to color the sound no matter what if we crank up the voltage 14 something similar very very similar not a big difference but as i mentioned 24 volts there you go so when you crank it up the voltage at 24 volts you have all of these nastiness start to show up so the harmonic wise it's not as bad but like all this noise and everything yeah it's really really not nice so you can run it from 24 volts but it's really pushing the chip because i think those chips are not really designed to run at 24 volts so it's not very nice same with intermodulation which is this one so this is in modulation between 60 hertz and 7 kilohertz and at 9 volts you can see it has loads of harmonics and those harmonics are very very high so again it's gonna color the sound not in a nice way 14 volts we have noise a bit lower however the harmonics are kind of the same but on 24 volts it's a disaster again so if you're gonna run these chips don't run them at maximum 24 volts try to keep them at about 14 13 volts where you usually have like normal lithium batteries and car batteries 12.8 volts something like that it doesn't like 24 volts on other chips you might get more power but it's going to be very very dirty power this is really bad really really bad same intermodulation at higher frequencies so yeah it's not nice especially like this two kilohertz tone is at minus 46 that is horrible so that's at 9 volts 14 volts we are having something here happening at higher frequencies and at 24 volts again 
horrible, horrible distortion and horrible intermodulation. Everything has minus 50. For higher frequencies, it's really, really not nice. If we're going to have a look at THD versus frequency, it's really, really flat all the way. So this is at 9 volts at 5 watts of output. So it's still clean-ish. You have, what, 0.4%. Of TG plus noise, it is second harmonic dominated. You can see it together with the noise, and it's totally flat. There's no massive peaks here. If we crank up the voltage to 14 volts, we see that the third harmonic rises up. So you see the third harmonic here is at the bottom. If you crank up the voltage, the third harmonic pops up a little bit more distortion. And at 24 volts, yeah, it's nasty. It doesn't look nice. And the last thing is the frequency response. So frequency response doesn't depend on the voltage. And this is very zoomed in scale. So we have minus 1 dB drop at 20 hertz. And at 20 kilohertz, it is 4 dB. Close to more, a bit more than 4 dB drop compared to this. So it does attenuate the higher frequencies quite a lot. On normal amplifiers, you would see at 20 kilohertz, maybe like half a dB, maybe one dB. This is quite a lot. It kind of drops, starts to drop off. You can see at about 5, 6K. And then the top end is just is not there. So it's not that great. In general, it's not that great of an amplifier. But for five pounds, if you want to use it as a, like a Bluetooth speaker or something, yeah. Why not? You can use it. For the price, is great, but don't expect anything good from it. So as a, as I mentioned, as like Adam Francis did that, like the boombox with Temu speakers, it's perfectly fine. Run it from lithium. It's not going to draw a lot of power because it's a class D amplifier. It's not going to be as clean. You see half a percent all the way. But outside in a boombox, you don't really need that cleanliness. So for car audio hi-fi systems, it's a big no. But for a DIY project, did you like anything you want with it? Yeah. Just again, don't expect a lot of power from it. Uh, 10, 15 watts, similar to a head unit. And cleanliness as well, similar to a head unit. So nothing special as expected from a chip amplifier, but the compactness, the size of it, and the price is amazing. So this was the distortion measurements of the cheapest amplifier I bought from AliExpress. Thank you very much for watching, guys, and I will see you in the next one.